The Godfather. Today we're going to be working the Godfather. I decided what follows. Esperaré. Uh, I will. De I decide what follows. I will wait for you guys to pick up and get to where we uh, advanced on Recuerdos de la Alhambra. You post the work on uh, YouTube. I check it out as soon as we are set with that part so far, and we move forward. Okay. Decidí que vamos a hacer lo siguiente. Voy a esperar que me pongan los videos en YouTube para ver cómo están avanzando con el tema de recuerdos de la lámpara, que puede que necesite más tiempo. Y cuando veo que lo tienen de alguna manera ya madurado, vamos a seguir con recuerdos de la lámpara. Pero mientras tanto, quiero darle una pieza mucho más fácil de digerir. Meanwhile, I'd like to propose to you one beautiful song that is much more easy to digest, to learn. And of course, as compared to Recuerdos de la Alhambra, probably you will feel as if this is a piece of cake. Nevertheless, do not underestimate any piece of music because every piece of music I have played in my life poses some type of challenge. Entonces, probablemente el padrino, comparándola así a nivel técnico con lo que fue Recuerdos de la Alhambra, probablemente lo subestime y lo tomen por una pieza fácil. Y eso todo bien, pero cuidado, porque todas las piezas me han enseñado la experiencia ofrecen desafíos y el padrino no es la excepción. Ok. Again, mangore.com, you must subscribe because I will only go so far into the master classes and then you will have to rely on the, on the website. Not just because I want to kind of uh, blackmail you, but because you need to get in touch with the music, with my teaching and everything. Ok. 
So this is like an extra thing for you to add to your learning. Ahora, claramente, yo espero sinceramente que hagan el esfuerzo y se suscriban a mangore.com. De hecho, mi idea es avanzar en las piezas hasta, hasta cierto punto y luego quiero que ustedes re, usen el sitio donde están ya explicadas muchas de estas cosas y todas las piezas. No como una forma de, de chantaje, sino más bien como una forma de que quiero que se involucren en mi enseñanza y lo significa leer la música, etc. Así que eh, quiero aclarar esto para que no quede así como, bueno, un poco... So, the score. Vamos a comenzar con The Godfather. First of all, let's get tuned. Vamos a afinarnos con... Uh, let's get tuned with the guitars. Okay. So the Godfather. As uh, with all the pieces, como con todas las piezas, the first thing we have to do, lo primero que tenemos que hacer es spot the main melody, ubicar la melodía principal. Okay. En la partitura vemos claramente que la melodía principal tiene un movimiento bastante homogéneo. We can see from the score that the main melody has a pretty evened out, like a wavy kind of movement to it. And two, we can see also that it's very clearly marked on the score because every note has the, the little uh, uh, stick pointing upwards. Entonces veremos, simplemente observando la partitura, que el padrino, el padrino, es una melodía que se mueve muy, de una manera muy homogénea, como ondulado, por unas olas muy suaves, de esta forma. Y que toda la melodía principal tiene los palitos apuntando hacia arriba. ¿ok? Esas son las primeras observaciones que podemos simplemente ver mirando el score. Entonces lo primero que hacemos es, mirando la partitura, we play the main melody and we go... Now, I'm at starting the piece, estoy comenzando la pieza con staff number two, con, la segunda, con el segundo pentagrama, porque el primero es la introducción y la vamos a hacer al final. The first staff is the introduction and we're going to do that at the end. So we start off with the real thing, with el padrino staff number two, el segundo pentagrama. I will play it once, the whole staff, and then we will go together. Again. This is the first staff, actually the second staff, of the Godfather. Let's do it. Okay, primero que nada, antes que nada, prima de tutto. Ciao Dario, come stai? Bello, piacere vederti. Prima di tutto, anzitutto, our left hand, la mano sinistra, the, la mano sinistra, una presentazione, ok, parallel presentation, una presentación longitudinal, longitudinal presentation. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome to Mangore Masterclass. So, keep your hand parallel to the fingerboard. And then you go with the first string using the A finger, usando el dedo anular, usando el dito anulare. We play the main melody three notes in a row. Tocamos tres notas seguidas en la primera cuerda con el dedo anular. Suoneamos tres notas consecutivas con el dito anular su la prima corda. Sarebbe...
Finger one on the A, quinto tra fifth fret. Quinto traste, primera cuerda, el dedo uno. So, first of all, nothing, zero. First string, first string, fifth fret, finger one. Dedo uno, quinto traste, primera cuerda. And then finger four on the sixth fret, on the C, on string one, with the A finger. So again, Okay, I want you to please notice two things. One, the three notes, las tres notas, sound the same. Suenan y Okay, let's see here. Might be back. Looks like we're back. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Well, it's not my fault, actually, but, you know. So, again, nice round sound with the A finger. Un sonido bien redondo, lindo, un suono rotondo, ben bello con la mano destra for the main melody. The hand in the longitudinal presentation. The fingers all in line. Your shoulders down. You are centered on the center of the guitar. Just go... Okay, the next note in the melody is a B, this note here. And this note goes accompanied by three notes. A bass note, un basso per acompañare, and two middle notes here on the fifth fret, these two notes. Very much like a romance, remember? Only we play them together. And in order to be able to squeeze those two notes, we need a little bar chord. Vamos a necesitar una pequeña ceja de tres cuerdas para poder tocar ese pequeño acorde. Just like in romance. Igualito que romanza. El mismo acorde es in romance. So you go. Look what I do. I use finger four as a, a lever. Uso el dedo cuatro como una leva. And I rotate, look, rotate, bring the palm of the hand closer to the fingerboard. Giro un poquitito la mano así y presento la cejillita. Again, I'm in a longitudinal presentation. I lift the fingers, I rotate on finger four, and I present the small bar chord. Uso el dedo cuatro como una leva, giro alrededor del dedo cuatro, acerco la palma de la mano al diapasón y y piso la, la cejilla número 5. Giro attorno al dito 4, que serve da leva, e presento il dito 1 sulla quinta posizione. Quindi... As soon as I have the finger 1 on the fingerboard, I lift finger four, which has served its purpose, and I put finger three down. Apenas ho girato la mano, ho presentato il dito uno sulla quinta posizione, mi libero del dito quattro, che ha servito il suo fine, e appoggio il dito tre per suonare il si. E suono l'accordo arpeggiato. It's an arpeggiated chord. It goes real fast. It's like closing your fist. You go... So, now let's do this with the metronome for one minute. One minute with the metronome.
Now, let's do one variation. The variation is this one, and check it out, it goes like this. Let's do this for one minute because I want you to get familiar with this sequence. This sequence that we are playing in a romance you will see many times in different musical scenarios and that's why I want you guys to make an exercise. Esta secuencia que acabamos de tocar aquí en El Padrino la verán muchas veces en muchos diferentes escenarios musicales de otras piezas, por ende quiero que la asimilen mucho dentro de ustedes. Esta secuencia que ho appena suonato de questo primo pentagrama è importante che lo assimiliate perché lo vedrete spesso in differenti pezzi che suonerete. Quindi, let's go just a little bit slower here. Ready? One minute. Now, the other thing I would like to concentrate on is the arpeggiated chord. Arpeggiated chords are one of the many, well, not many, of the techniques used in classical guitar. El acorde arpeggiado es una de las técnicas usadas en la guitarra clásica. El acordo arpeggiato es una de las técnicas usadas en la guitarra. Una de las más usadas, I would say, one of the most used. It's very guitar-like. And it's called harpeggiated because it comes from the harp. You know? So you go, you play the notes slightly separated, but real fast. And it's really like a fist like motion. It's como un movimiento que chiude il pugno. E le dita entra cuando, come cuando fai così con le dita sul tavolo. You know, something like that. Very similar to that. You cue the dita in sequenza molto. Let's try this by itself. It goes like this. Or just stay here and we do. Now, you must have noticed, habrá notado, que yo levanto los dedos del diapasón entre cada pausa. Uh, you must have seen that between each repetition I do lift the fingers from the fingerboards from the fingerboard and I release all tension. E rilasso la mano tra ogni sequenza. Perché? Why? Because I want to keep my hand uh, relaxed at all time. I do not want to build up tension. I want to dissipate tension. So you relax the hand between each repetition. You go... It's no point doing because your hand is going to be drained and I don't want you to get used to playing with your hand uh, uh, stiffened, okay? Non voglio che vi abituate a suonare con la mano tesa o con la mano con dolore, specialmente in questa zona. You want to keep the hand very, very much relaxed. So... You might want to do it like this at first. build up the speed to make it sound almost this is the block chord este sería el acorde en bloque questo sarebbe l'accordo in blocco and this is the arpeggiated chord the arpeggiated chord is a guitar uh, resource that you must know when to use and you must also know when not to use it because one tends to be too attached to it Uno tiende a quererse casar con el acorde eh, arpegiado, lo cual puede ser un poco muy ya 
eh, redundante, un poco así eh, cursi, decimos por acá. Entonces, sí, now let's do the whole sequence. Now, once you did, you lift finger number three and go. And then four one. Now, let's uh, look at the end of this measure and I want to give you three different options for the rest of the measure. Les voy a dar tres diferentes opciones para el resto de este compás. Again, I ask you to subscribe to Mangore.com because you have all my transcriptions there with the fingerings and the explanations and of course I want you to have a score that you can rely on where you can write your ideas and whatever it is that we figure out. Les invito a que por supuesto se hagan de una suscripción a Mangore.com porque ahí tienen todas las partituras y pueden hacer sus anotaciones. Me invito a suscribir, a inscribirme a mangore.com perché lì avete appunto lo, la, la, lo spartito quindi the score here goes we have three options for what comes now either this is the easiest one and it's fine you can go again again three one Two, four, zero. Let's go, let's go in parts. Three, one. This is option number one. Option number two. Use both finger number three and finger number two to stop the F sharp here. I'm sorry, the F here. So it goes. It's a little nicer because you have the background sustain of the F. So you have, so either, or, depends on your skill and how much you really like it. So option one, option two, and option three. Option three includes a third note to even make it more rich. Incluye la tercera opción, una tercera nota para hacerlo aún más rico, que sería. It's four note score. This requires, eso requiere, que you bring out the wrist like that with a push from the elbow. Tienen que sacar el, la muñeca afuera con un pequeño empuje desde el codo. Da, 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 dal gomito una piccola spinta e presentare queste tre dita in triangolo and present these three fingers here as a triangle this might be too demanding if it's too demanding for you to play just practice it on the side and look at a moment in the future when you can play this full chord if you think it's worth it of course y buscarás un lugar en el futuro donde puedas incorporar este acorde completo si te parece vale la pena but as long as you play the main melody and the bass it's pretty much okay so you can go but this one would be in my opinion the least you should aim at which is with this F it's really nice plus you get the, the F ready to be played in the next además te sirve el dos que lo puedes tocar luego que sería I'm sorry. Four. And then fifth string and fi first string. And that is officially the end of the first phrase of The Godfather. Y este es oficialmente el final de la primera frase de El Padrino. 
E questo è ufficialmente la fine della, primo, uh, della prima frase del padrino. Dunque, let's recap. I'll do the whole first phrase. La prima, la prima frase in the three versions. In las tres versiones. Version, version number one. Versione numero uno. Relax. Version number two. And relax. Version number three. These are the three options to end phrase number one, which is the signature of the Godfather. If you play this phrase, by the end of the phrase, everybody in their brains is going to go, bzz, 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 the Godfather. Okay? En el minuto, en el instante en que termina de tocar esta primera frase, el cerebro de vuestros oyentes hará la ecuación rápido y dirá, the Godfather. Because this is the signature phrase of the piece okay so let's work it complete you choose which one of the version you feel comfortable with and we go with the metronome and we do it at this speed and we do it for one minute ready Suppose you have it by now. Now let's look at the second phrase. Here, okay. Phrase number two. Now, phrase number one, I think we have it nailed down. I will uh, consider it as a fact that you will go back and forth on the video till you get it figured out. The second phrase, the second phrase starts off after the relaxation. La segunda frase comienza luego de la relajación. Nuestra mano se está relajando. Our hand is relaxing, meaning the blood is flowing, lactic acid is being expelled, and our hand is literally breathing. So you go, and as you play the 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 double uh, the double stop here, you play the second string open. You travel to first position and play the A. This is like an echo. It's like uh, un echo, es como un echo que, re, que retorna. Sería. Da, 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 da. Something lost in the middle of nowhere. And it must sound like that. Y tiene que sonar como un echo. You come here and you do. It's third string. With the index finger and only the third finger, you go. I'm sorry, the second string. The segunda cuerda. Then third string. Segunda, second. Segunda. Segunda, tercera. Segunda, segunda. Second, third, second, second. So. But a little bit lower 
with a little slight change of sound, con un pequeño cambio de sonido, viniendo un poquitito con la mano más así, rotating the hand a little bit more to the right, girando la mano un poquito más a la derecha, le da un sonido un poco más metálico. You give it a more metallic sound, just turning your right hand a little bit more to the right. Le, le da un sonido un poquito más metálico, girando apenas, apenas la mano de esta, guarda. So, the whole sequence. Again. Again. Phrase number two now, same beginning as phrase number one. Same thing all the way to here. Now the change, look. And I give you here as well, three options. De nuevo, os doy tres posibilidades, tres alternativa. Un'altra un volta vi darò tre differenti eh, possibilità di scelta. Sarebbe once you've done the and you are back in the day we did now we go like this. Option number one I'm sorry I'm lost. Ah, okay, here. Here. Option number one. Again. Three, one. Zero. On the first string. And two on the fourth fret. Second string. Dito due. Corda due. Tasto numero 4, dito medio qui. Remember, just to make a wrap, we use the A finger on the first, the middle finger on the second, and the third finger on the third. And the thumb takes care of these three. Para recordar, cada vez que tocamos la primera cuerda, anular. Cada vez que tocamos la segunda cuerda, medio. Y cada vez que tocamos la tercera cuerda, índice. El pulgar se encarga de la cuarta, quinta y sexta. Ogni volta que suonamos la prima, il dito anulare si incarica la volta che suoniamo la seconda corda se ne incarica il dito medio e la volta che suoniamo la terza corda se ne incarica il dito indice e il pollice si incarica di queste tre corde ok? questo chiaramente è una specie di base generale sulla quale muoverci però ci sono sempre possibilità di poter alternare ok so option 1 Again, and I use the open string to relax and fly to the B flat, to the E flat. Again, as I fly, I relax. Okay, option number two, option numero dos. Uh, so option number two is using three notes instead of one we use the two notes I'm sorry only two notes which are these two notes the E here and we go We use these two fingers, the middle finger and the A finger, to play these two notes. I would say, yo diría que si tocaste 
con dos notas la primera vez te mantengas constante y toque dos notas la segunda. I would say that if you did use the, the option with two notes on the first phrase, be consistent to use the same pattern in the second. So use the two notes pattern. But that's also up to you to decide. Okay, so. And then, of course, there is option number three, which is a little bit more uh, demanding. So you go. You lift everything up, press on the C on the eighth fret, use the E on the third string, and the E the B on the first string. This is the chord. So Yeah, there's no other way around this one. So it's uh Yeah, and that's the way it goes. You do not make a full bar chord. No haces una barra, una ceja completa. Simplemente usas the bass of finger one. Just like fiddle player, just like the violin players. You go like that and you just squeeze here. So you go. Finger number four on the second string, fret number 10. Leave finger number three there for the E flat, for the E, I'm sorry. And then play the E flat like this. I'll do the whole sequence again, look. and lift everything up. And finger number two is like your foot on the ground, but your hand is relaxing already. Okay, so again, option number one. Option number two. And option number three. The three options again. If you're gonna play the first option, you gotta take a little rubato, a little stolen from the. Tienes que usar un pequeño rubato para darle más color. So you go. With a little vibrato. So it kind of uh, fills in uh, the empty space that the lack of uh, accompaniment leaves behind. Porque deja haciendo un pequeño vibrato, le das un poco de color y escondes un poco la ausencia de más notas. Es una especie de recurso, un recurso, te doy cuesta así como un recurso de tipo interpretativo. Te estoy dando una posibilidad de apunto cuando fai. Gli fai un piccolo vibrato a fin di appunto nascondere un po' la mancanza di note. Okay, so this is totally viable. Eh? Actually, it's one of those things that you can always decide as you go. So you go. Or option number two. Sorry. To be honest, I don't like this one very much. 
because this E wants to take center stage and the E is not really the, the important note. So I'd rather go with option one or three. So either... and or... And this finger scoots over here. And that's where our phrase two ends. But this is actually staff number three. Me, me estoy adelantando porque realmente esta nota ya entra en el pentagrama tres, pero se la doy para que tenga closure, para que tenga un cierre la frase. But this is the way it goes. Look. For the first scenario, primer escenario, primo escenario. First scenario de nuevo. Sorry. Again. With the fourth string, con la cuarta. So, phrase number two, frase numero due. Scenario number two, second scenario. No, let's go with the third because uh, the, 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 the second one is discarded. So the other option is, la otra opción es, And that's the end of the of the phrase. Y ese es el final de la frase. So now for the next three minutes non-stop, tres minutos non-stop, we play phrases number one and two together. Ahora sin poder parar, pero y, and you just jump in whenever you can. Si te quedas atrás, si te equivocas, si necesitas descansar, saltas y entras donde puedes. If you are too tired, if you lose your your pace, your place, don't worry, just jump in anytime you can. We're not gonna stop for three minutes, okay? Ready? Ready, go. Thank you. 
that's about it. Uh, now, let's uh, uh, um, sum it up. So you have, I've shown you three different options for both phrases number one and phrase number two. Os he mostrado tres diferentes frases viables, las tres para tanto la primera frase como la segunda frase. Vi ho fatto vedere tre possibilità di digitazione tanto per la prima come per la seconda frase. It's entirely up to you to decide which one and what combination. Es, depende de ustedes cuál de esas opciones determinarán usando. Okay? Now, of course, tomorrow, de mañana, vamos a seguir con, el, con, el, la siguiente, con, la siguiente, con el siguiente pentagrama. Next, tomorrow we'll do the next... Uh, the next uh, uh, staff. Now, of course, you're always welcome to sign up on to Mangore.com because you get every single measure with its corresponding video at your disposal to advance as you wish. And you can always rely on the master classes here live to clear up doubts or to see uh, alternative options. Yo os recomiendo sinceramente que se suscriban a Mangore.com porque ahí tienen todos los pentagramas, todos los videos y sería bueno que puedan aprovechar de ellos para poder avanzar a su paso. Vi recomiendo, si podéis, por favor, de, de inscribirse a mangore.com porque allí habéis apunto acceso a todos los staffs, a todos los pentagramas, a todos los vídeos, y podéis así avanzar a vuestro ritmo. ¿Ok? Now, to close it up, to close our class today, uh, I would like to play with you guys the chromatic scale we played yesterday. I will play it once so that we are all kind of in the same mood, but we can play together. And let's go at a speed of uh, uh, 100, 100 here, and we play the scale with two notes per beat. So we go. No. Let's go at 80 beats. Here, 80. 80 is fine. Okay, so go. Finish your practice every day with a chromatic scale and of course begin it with a chromatic scale. I don't start off with a chromatic scale not to steal too much time from the master class. Yo no comienzo con la cara cromática para no robar demasiado tiempo la clase, pero sería bueno que ustedes ya la hayan practicado por su cuenta. Sarebbe bene que voi la practicate prima de venir a la lección a fin que le vostre idea siano preparate y pronte per, il, per la master class. Ok, so uh, remember, I would like you, me gustaría que abran su canal de YouTube, that you open a channel on YouTube, or if you prefer Facebook or whatever, I don't know. YouTube is a very good tool for that. You open a channel on YouTube, you post your work uh, privately, and you send me the link to my mail, renato at mangore.com. You mail me the link to your work, I check it out, I give you hints. I recommend you do that. Upload your work, your practice on Mangore, on uh, YouTube, okay? Guys, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Uh, then you tell me what's your name in uh, Chinese because I, I can read the characters, but I don't know what it's pronounced like. So you tell me your name. Big pleasure to meet you guys. Logan, nice to see you. Yes, the whole score is available. It is the whole score is available. I don't know what you're looking at, but the whole score is available. Let me see. Print the score. Yeah, that's the score. It's one page. Let me know if you have any more doubts there. The whole score is there. See you guys tomorrow then.